Hello, everybody. Today we are going to take a look at a few questions from topic four homework. You can see I'm going to start here with topic four. And we are going to talk starting off today about finding the future value of an annuity. So the question uh, presented to us is this Pablo wants to save money to purchase a car. He buys an annuity with quarterly payments that earn 2.4% interest compounded quarterly. Payments will be made at the end of each quarter. Just note this, okay? The compounding and the periodic payments always have to be at the same time. So if it's compounded quarterly, it has to be payments quarterly and vice versa, okay? Just so you know. So let's find the total value of the annuity in five years. If the quarterly payment is 927, do not round any intermediate computations and round to the nearest cent. Okay, so first of all, we're going to set up the payment. I am in cell B15. Okay, cell B15 is the payment that's 927. The rate of interest is 2.4%. N is four because it's quarterly, there are four quarters per year, so N is four. T is five because there are five years. All right, the payment to the right of us there shows exactly the formula that we need to use. In the formula, P stands for the payment. Um, R, N, and T are as they were given to the left there. So we are going to use A as the future value. That's also called the future amount, okay? And let's take a look at the formula. Click on cell G5, and let's take a look at the formula, okay? You guys can see if I click on the function bar in white right beside the last parentheses, I just clicked my mouse there, you can actually click anywhere. It shows me right away that it's selected and used the cells that I set up for it in column B. When you enter these cells, you can enter them by typing the numbers in, lowercase letters is fine, or you can just simply click on the cells, okay? Uh, we have several formulas to do on several different questions. I'm not gonna enter this one all the way. I just want you guys to see that Excel can do this easily for you. Save this work, set up your own Excel sheets, save this work for your homework and other assignments that you have. Just a note also here, this comes, this formula comes from exactly topic one, DQ one. Remember that back in week one, right? Here we are back again, visiting that same formula. All right, very good. Let's check out the next question. You can see down here, I'm moving across the tabs at the bottom, right? Homework number 16. All right, we want to find the effective annual interest rate of a loan or investment. Susan took out a loan for $6,500. The charge is an annual interest rate of 8.6% compounded daily. Assume there are 365 days in a year. Let's go for it, all right? So first of all, we want to find the amount owed after one year, assuming no payments are made. So the setup is in L, column L. The initial principal of the loan was $6,500. The rate of interest is 8.6%. There are 365 days per year. Compounded daily means N is 365. And it says no payments are made for one year. So therefore T is one. All right, I'm gonna use the payment highlighted there in yellow or the future value formula rather. I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna walk through this one with you, okay? so. Walk through this with me and let's watch, okay? All right, so there's no formula there. Remember in Excel, just like in major assignment one and everything else you've done in the DQs, begin your formula with equals. Now let's follow it. There's P, just click. You don't have to type, just click. Click right there. L4, click on it. Asterisk, that's shift eight, parentheses, one plus, R, just click on it with your mouse. Left click on cell L5, forward slash, left click on N, that is L6, parentheses. Carrot key, remember that shift six, open parentheses, N, once again, just click on it. 
L6 times T L7 close parentheses. You can see the whole formula up in the toolbar, right? The formula bar rather. It's all highlighted in different colors to show you exactly where those cells are on the Excel sheet itself, okay? Just hit enter. All right, it's rounded very nicely to the nearest cent. Remember, all you have to do to get that to change is just go click up here on the dollar sign right up on your toolbar and it formats for you automatically. All right, now next, the effective annual yield is also, also called the annual percentage yield, all right, because it is a percentage. Let's click on this formula and see what we've done here. All right, so the annual percentage effective rate or annual yield is, looks like one plus R, right? Let's, let's make sure we're getting this all together here. Let me grab my pencil. All right, it looks like this is equal to one plus R divided by N, right? One plus R divided by N raised to the N minus one. All right, so when I go back up and look at this formula, I can see what I'm following here, right? Click on the, the formula bar once again, you can see I have one plus R is in cell L5 divided by N, that's L6, close parentheses, raised to the L6, once again, which is N minus one. Hit enter, convert to the proper format. It says around your end to the nearest hundredth of percent. And there you go, two decimal places. All right, super good. Let's clear this out and check another one. All right, homework number 17. We're looking to find the down payment, the loan amount, and the monthly payment for a loan. Susan plans to, to purchase a new truck. The dealer requires 20% down payment of the original amount. Susan will finance the rest with a fixed rate amortized auto loan at 8.5% interest counting it over six years. Now remember, since it's monthly payments, it must, must be monthly compounding, all right? So let's check it out. Part A says, find the required down payment. So the loan, I'm gonna call it P, the principal amount of the loan is P. The down payment rate is 20%. The down payment is simply, the amount of the loan times the rate. Click on your formula bar once again. You can see that I've just simply entered L4 times L5 to multiply the two together. That's my down payment. So how do I calculate the amount of the loan then, right? The amount of the loan is, in other words, this is the amount that I'm going to finance, right? The principal amount of the vehicle is not being financed. I am financing the principal out minus the down payment, which leaves me with a loan amount of $31,200. Therefore, that becomes my principal amount, my new principal for the loan value. All right, so this is what I'm going to loan or borrow rather, the loan value is what I'm going to borrow. R is 8.5. N is 12 because once again, we're having monthly payments. So therefore it must be monthly compounding over six years. So let's go down and take a look at our payment once again, everybody, okay? Here's the payment given to you in yellow. Let's click on the cells. Notice when I click on the cells, I'm taking P, which is my principal amount, that's L12 times the rate divided by N, that's L13 divided by L14. You guys can easily see the progression of that formula as I continue here. And note, okay, this is also going to be on major assignment two. So as you prepare yourself for the homework, you're preparing yourself for major assignment two in week four as well, all right? Very good, thank you guys. Let's go to the next one. Homework number 23, all right, finding the monthly payment, the total payment, the interest paid for a loan. So Charlie borrowed money from the bank to buy a motorcycle. 
He took out a personal loan for $11,000 at a rate of 4.15%. Monthly payments, remember it's monthly payments, therefore it must be monthly compounding and it's for five years. So I've entered P is 11,000, R is 4.15, N is 12, T is five. You guys see a trend? We're using the same formula we used just a moment ago. So here's our payment formula once again. We've used it already, so it's not new to us. Click on the formula bar once again the in, in white, and you can see how I've selected the cells in column L for P, R, N, and T respectively. Okay, that being said, what did I just calculate? I calculated the payment that I'm going to make every month, that's 12 times per year for five years. So if I wanna know what my total payment is, what I'm gonna pay for this motorcycle, it is, you can see $12,199.63. How did I arrive at that? Let's just click on the formula bar once again, and you can see I've multiplied N times T times the payment. The order is not important here, right? I can multiply these three cells in any order that I want to. The payment every month, so it's a payment times 12 times five, right? That tells me the total amount that I pay for this loan. In this case, it's 12, 199 and 63 cents. Therefore, the interest must be what? What do you guys think? What cells am I gonna type into my formula to calculate the interest that I paid? All right, yeah, you guys are right. I have used the total amount that I paid minus the principal of the amount that I loaned, right, that I borrowed. All right, so the total amount minus the principal. So clicking once again, the mouse on the formula bar, you can see here in Excel, I have used equals L12, which is my total minus the principal P. And a very simple formula gives me a return uh, a value of $1,199.63 that I paid in interest for this motorcycle. All right, very good. Let's keep going. All right, this one has a little bit more involved here, doesn't it, everybody? So let's take a look here. We are comparing monthly payments and total costs for two loans. So what's the situation? All right, Shin is taking out a mortgage for $251,000. He has offers from two lenders. He wants to know which one would be the better one and by how much, okay? The better one and by how much. So once again, in yellow, you can see the payment formula. By now, this is our old friend, right? We've used this several times. So in, in column L, I'm going to put the formulas uh, for P, not a formula, just a value, right? 251,000. The first bank has R is 3.6%. It's monthly payment, so N is 12. The time is for 40 years. The total payment we calculate to be $987.46. All right, so click on this formula once again. In L8, click your, Excel, uh, click your mouse in the function bar, and you will see here that I have once again used the values in L to calculate that monthly payment. By now, you guys are getting pretty good at this, so I congratulate you on that. Thank you all for your continued effort here. All right, I want to compare that to B, a bank that offered a 15-year mortgage at a rate of 3.4%. Now, what do you guys think, right? Just thinking about it logically, we'd have to know that the payment is gonna be a lot more, right? Why is that? Because it's less than half the time, right? The first loan was for 40 years. The second loan is for 15 years. Therefore, we would expect the payment to be much higher because we have to pay it off in a much less time, in much less time. All right, notice the interest rate is also a little bit lower for the 15 year loan. And that is because why? When you're lending money, the shorter amount of time it's lent, the lower the risk, that's why. All right, so once again, uh, just so you guys know, I did not, 
even type this formula in. I copied the formula right here. Watch. You guys want to see me do it? Watch. Just delete this. Okay. No, it's not going to be that bad. All right. Just delete it. Go up here. Click on cell L8. Control C is in cat, right? Control C on my keyboard. Drop it down to cell L14 and do control V as in Victor. And all the work is done. That's pretty nice, right? I didn't do any work. I just copied and pasted. All right, so I have both loans calculated. You can see there's obviously a vast difference in the loan payment, and that is because of the length of time of the loan. Now, it says, suppose Shin pays the monthly payment each month for the full term. In other words, they pay for all 40 years, 12 months, 987 a month, 15 years, 12 months, 1782 a month. Which lender's mortgage loan would have the lowest total amount to pay off and by how much? Well, the total for loan A, okay? When I say total A, that's the total loan A. That's from the Savings and Loan Association. $473,981.79. Remember, once again, that is the, go ahead and click your mouse right in the formula bar. N times T times payment, number of payments per year times the number of years times the payment. Do the exact same thing for the loan B, that's the bank loan. And you will see it is once again, the compounding period that's 12 times 15 for years times 1782 for payment. Hit enter and I have a total mortgage payoff of 321, 320,769 and 81 cents. So it's pretty obvious to at the time now, which one is best. The best would be to go, if you're just talking about interest, right? Now, of course, if you couldn't make the payment for the 15 year mortgage, it wouldn't matter. But all things being equal, if I can make that payment, I would rather go with the bank that has the 15 year mortgage because it saves me a whopping $153,211.98. So I would go there with the bank because it saves me a ton of cash. All right, we are doing great, guys. One more question here, all right? Just hang with me a few more minutes here. Let's go to number 25. This is the last homework question. So let's take a look at it here together. All right, this question, we want to compare monthly payments for subsidized and unsubsidized student loans. Okay, so Tammy had five years left in college. When she did, she took out a loan for $17,512. The loan has an annual interest rate of 2.7%. After five years, she graduated and began repaying the loan immediately upon graduation. According to the terms of the loan, Tammy will have to make monthly payments for 10 years after graduation. During the five years she was in school not making payments, the school accrued simple interest. All right. So accrued simple interest while she was in school. All right, first of all, let's suppose that she had it subsidized. What does that mean? That means the government paid for the interest while she was in school. Therefore, when she was starting to make payments after five years, the loan amount was still the same because no interest had been accrued, right? So we are old friends with this payment formula. We have the amount of the loan, R, the rate, N, and T, the amount of time we have to pay off this loan. At this rate, you can see that Tammy's going to have to make payments of $166.68 per month. All right, now, during the five years she was in school and not making payments, the loan accrued simple interest. All right, so I need a simple interest formula. This would be the future value, right? For what? I'm looking at the future value after five years. So if it accrued simple interest for five years, 
I need that future amount, okay? That's what I'm looking for. Simple interest, it says, not compound. All right, you can see the formula that I've typed in here is a compound interest formula, so I have to modify this. You guys ready to help me out? How do I modify this formula to be future value, simple interest, not compound? All right, you guys remember what that is? One plus the rate times the time, right? That's simple interest. All right, so hit enter. And let's plug this directly into our formula. I'm gonna go right up here to column J and cell 11. So J11, you guys with me? Let's go. Equals, just click on the cell, right? I'm gonna use my mouse to click. That is B15 times open parentheses one plus, use my mouse to click on R, all right, times T. What is T though? T is not 10, T is not the time it took her to pay off after graduation. This T is while she's in school, that's the five years, okay? And that's down here in cell B19. All right, so I need B16, times B19, close my parentheses and hit enter. All right, that tells me that in five years at that rate of interest, she is going to have a new loan of $19,876.12 because why? Because now they're making Tammy pay the interest on that loan rather than being subsidized by the US government she is now paying interest. So now you can see her future value is no longer 17, it's 19, right? 19,000 and so forth. So now when I calculate the new payment for an unsubsidized loan, notice the only difference here, everybody, the only difference is I'm now using J13, I'm sorry, J11, right, J11, because that's my new loan amount with the accrued interest, and everything else is exactly the same. I used cells B16, 17, and 18 for the rest of the formula. All right, so hit enter here, and now that shows us exactly why we have a higher payment, right? She's got a payment of what? The difference there, right? Mm. 166, 189, right? That's about 23 bucks. And no, it's not exactly 22 something, right? So it's a little bit higher because of the interest that was accrued during those five years while she was still in college. All right, very good, everybody. Thank you all for your time. I appreciate you guys taking and investing, investing, right? A few minutes of your time here with me today. Take care, have a good day.